no shortage of dilapidated properties man that one's brutal you got that porch down and the porch over there is down too you probably had some drunk bastard uh, just driving <laughs> you probably had a drunk bastard smash this car into the porches unfortunately uh, that kind of thing is all too common we actually one time even had one of our our own tenants uh, they reached out to us frantically because somebody crashed into their house And it's just like, dude, that's just par for the course when you're dealing with houses in these Section 8 neighborhoods, man. Unfortunately, like, uh, smashing a car into a front porch is, you know, it, it's, it's not that shocking to me. There's really nothing at this point in my life, in my career, uh, that surprises me, including a car smashing into a porch. Oftentimes what you'll get is abandoned buildings like this and you see it's telling the city not to the uh, if the the slumlord or whoever owns it, right, they've like walked away from the building, it looks terrible. If they don't cut the grass, it'll look like this, right? They don't cut the weeds, and what happens is the city's gonna come in and they're gonna cut it and they're gonna bill you like you know a ridiculous amount of time. And in Cleveland, in certain parts of Cleveland, there is so many like areas where the landlords have completely walked away from their buildings and they've abandoned them you know the city guys are out there cutting it and they're just you know billing these uh folks so when you get like a super jacked up building like that it looks like it's abandoned it looks like the guy that owns it uh has completely walked away from it but uh apparently that guy uh or girl plans on actually doing some type of <laughs> work to actually cut it so they don't get billed so maybe they are still paying their taxes i mean it's a freaking disaster but that's uh that's why you'll see things like city don't cut grass they're trying to avoid a fine hey yeah let's uh let's go in through that door basement do i have to sound surprised oh the basement hey, wait did you guys delete like all the old stuff Okay, I was gonna say, because we got some good stuff from the outside. I'm going left. So there are absolutely uh, people out there that, that have no business being in the, in the real estate investment space, man. It, it's just not, it's not for everyone. Um, it is tough, it is rough. Uh, so I would like to get the messaging out there to those uh, who who should not be investing in real estate? I'd like to get that message out to them early and often before they have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars or lose hundreds of thousands of dollars getting into something because they saw some fancy guy on the internet saying it was easy. Uh, so I, I want to get that message out there, of course, and I do want to keep those people from losing money. But also, I don't want people to think that it's all bad because again, it's not. You see a lot of the bad stuff, and if you start watching the bad stuff, you know, these websites and uh, algorithms, they'll just keep shooting you more and more of what you watch, so you end up in like an echo chamber, just continued negativity, right? That's why Facebook and Twitter, based on their algorithms, are just such fucking cluster fucks of negativity. Uh, so, you know, it ain't all bad, man. It ain't all bad. If, if you get your systems in place and you scale up and you, you, you put in the work and you work with the right team and, and you do things by the book in the right way, dude, you'll make millions. The sky's the limit. The amount of money that we make uh, running the business the right way is, is, is ungodly. It's amazing. You know, my uh, way of life is dramatically increased, right? Uh, this, this is another thing we get there on uh, internet land i read the comments every now and again it's so many fucking pricks out there like oh this guy's never had any idea what it's like to have a hundred dollars in his bank account or to have a le less than a million dollars in his bank this guy's just a rich prick doesn't know what it's like fuck you motherfucker i grew up in one of these fucking low-cost neighborhoods dude uh 
when I started investing in real estate, I was 21 years old, I was managing a fucking Radio Shack making $30,000. If you want to make money and you're willing to work hard, you will make money. It's all these fucking woke, victim playing pussies out there crying about this, blaming everybody for this and that because they're not willing to put in the fucking work. The system is rigged. The system is wrong. I got a bad student loan. Pay off my student loan. Well, who the fuck told you getting a philosophy degree was going to fucking feed your family, you fucking pussy? Of course you're serving up coffee. That's not going to make anybody any money, dude. Like, what are you thinking? Like, you dropped all that money and you, and you got a friggin' worthless degree, pal. You know what? I think you should buy it and we can turn it into a paintball arena. Small paintball arena. What happened here? Uh, I've been fixing the roof, but you know, I put the rubber up there. I put, oh man, I put compounds and stuff up there. It's on you, man. Don't blame everybody because you don't work hard. And those are the kind of people that just claim, you know, people like me must have got their money because they inherited something, right? No, it's just not everybody is out there playing the victim crying about everything, wanting everything to be handed to them, wanting everything on a silver platter. Not everybody works with that entitled victim mentality, right? And you get these fuckers, they go out there and they don't pay attention to what's actually happening and they just vilify everybody because they're unwilling to put in the work so they think everybody else must be unwilling to work. And that's just, that's just not the case, man. There's a lot of hardworking people in the real estate business. Some Landlords are some of the hardest working people I've ever met, man. The most successful landlords I've ever worked with oftentimes are the blue collar guys that you could be sitting next to them in a bar, sitting uh, across the booth from them at a friggin' Applebee's. They got blue jeans on, work boots. You'd have no idea they're multimillionaires, man. Uh, it's usually those kind of guys that are the ones that are making all the serious money out here. Especially in uh, these lower income kind of neighborhoods, man. Just fucking scrappers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.